All right, so we've got a few things left to wrap up the course. The first thing that we're going to talk about is statistics. We're going to talk about the three basic things that we can measure, which is mean, median, and mode. So mean, this is another word for the average of a list of numbers. So to calculate the mean, we're going to add up the values and divide by the number of values. Another one that we can look at is something called median, which is the middle value. In order to find the median, you want to list out the values from smallest to largest and find the middle value. If there is an even number of values, you're going to find the average of the two middle values. And the last one that we're going to look at is mode. Mode is the value that appears most often. Now we do have three possibilities for mode. If you have one number that appears most often, it is the mode. If you have two numbers that appear most often, we keep both of them, and it is called bimodal. If there is not one or two values that appear most often, then there is no mode. There's no such thing as trimodal or quadrimodal or anything else. It's either a mode, bimodal, or no mode. Okay, so let's go ahead and start by looking at some examples of these three things. So the first one we're going to look at is mean. So in order to calculate the mean, the first thing that we want to do is add up the values that we have. So for our first example, we have David has test scores of 84, 90, 95, 98, and 88. So if we add these up, so we're going to add these and then divide by the number that we have. We have a total of five numbers. So just to speed things along, if we use a calculator, when I add these up, I get 455. I want to divide by 5, and we get an average of 91. So our mean is 91. Okay, let's look at one more example. We have the sales each day last week were 86, 118, 126, 158, and 149. So we're going to go ahead and add these up. And we want to divide by the number of numbers. So we have five numbers here. We're going to divide by five. If we add these up, I get 637 divide by five. And I get a hundred and twenty seven dollars and forty cents. That takes care of mean. So this is the one that you're probably most familiar with. You probably may not have heard of it being called mean. You've probably heard of it being called average. But let's go ahead and look at some other ones that we can do in terms of statistics. The next one we have is median, and recall that median is the middle. 
Now we want to make sure that we're careful here that we don't just pick the middle number in a list of numbers. That's not how this works. We want to, it doesn't matter how these numbers are rearranged, our median should always be the same. So we want to do something so that we are consistent. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to rearrange from smallest to largest. So for example A, my smallest number is 6, I'm going to cross them off as we go along, 7, 12, 15, 18, 23, and 24. Now that we have them organized, we can go ahead and find our middle value, and our middle value is 15. So $15 is our median. All right, let's look at one more. For B, let's go ahead and rearrange these. So starting at the bottom, we have 7, 13, 15, 25, 28, 33, 47, 59, 68, and 74. So now we want to look for the middle. In the middle we actually have, since we have an even number in our list, we actually want to look at the two middle numbers. So we're going to calculate the average for these two middle numbers. So to calculate the average we're going to add 28 plus 33. We have two numbers that we're averaging together and 28 plus 33 is 61. If we divide that by 2, we get 30.5. Okay, so even though average is our most commonly used, one of the downfalls to average is what happens if we have numbers that are extreme? What if we have a really small number? What if we have a really large number? And so median, what that does is it kind of gets rid of the extreme values and focuses more on the numbers that are going to be a little closer together. Okay, so for instance, um, 7 in example B, 7 would have a large effect on the average, but in terms of the median, it does not. All right, so let's go ahead and look at our last one, which is mode. So recall that mode is the number that appears most often. So let's go ahead and look at example A and see if we can calculate the mode. So looking at this list, what do we have? Which number appears most often? Well, I see 74 appears three times, and I don't see any number appearing more than that. In fact, the rest of them looks like they only appear once. So our mode is 74. For example, B. What do we have here? Well, when I look at this, I see 485 appears twice, and I see 487 
also appears twice. Nothing else appears more than once. So our mode for this, this is bimodal. And our two modes are 485 and 487. Let's look at example C. Let's see what we got here. 28, I see 28 appearing one, two, three times. I also see 22 appears twice. But remember that we want the one that appears most often. This is not which ones appear multiple times, it's the most. And so this one, we have one mode and it is 28. Okay, let's try a couple other ones. If we look at example D. Example D, when I look at this, I notice that every single number here appears only once. So this is no mode. For our last example, let's see what we got here. We have 51 appears twice, 49 appears twice, and 60 appears twice. So this one, we do have three values that appear the same number, but remember there's no such thing as having three modes. So this is another example of no mode. Remember if it does not have one or two that appear most often, then it is no mode. Okay, so that takes care of our three basic ideas when it comes to statistics. So now let's go ahead and look at another concept in this section. The last thing we want to look at is something called weighted mean. And weighted mean, uh, the main difference between a mean and a weighted mean is depending on how many times the number appears, that determines its weight, that determines its um, importance, okay? The main difference we're going to see between a mean and a weighted mean is a weighted mean is usually we're going to be given a table of values and something called the frequency. The frequency is the number of times a value appears. So instead of writing everything out, we're going to have numbers that appear multiple times and we're just going to go ahead and organize our information into a chart. So frequency, this is the number of times a value appears. To calculate, we're going to multiply each value by its frequency. Remember, frequency is how many times it appears. And we want to add the results of this. Now frequency, if we add up the frequencies, this is the number of values that we have total. So just like with a regular mean, we add up all our values, then we divide by how many the, there are. To figure out how many there are, we need to add up the frequencies. So let's go ahead and look at an example and see if we can figure this out. Okay, so we have Allison Works Downtown. And she parks in a variety of lots that charge different values. Last month, she kept track of how much she spent in each lot and how many days she spent that amount. We want to find her average daily parking cost. So we have our parking fee and our frequency. 
So, how many days did she spend six dollars? We're going to multiply six times two. That gives me twelve. How much did she spend for at the seven dollar lot? We want to multiply seven times six. Gives me forty-two. How much did she spend at the $8 lot? We multiply 8 times 3. That gives me 24. And similarly for the 9 and the 10. 9 times 4 gives me 36. 10 times 6 gives me 60. Okay, so we want to add up these values, this is the total number that we have, so we're going to add up our values. We get 12 plus 42 plus 24 plus 36 plus 60 is 174. Now some of you may say, okay, well now we're going to divide by 5. But that would be incorrect because, remember, frequency is how many times these values appear. So we have two sixes, we have six sevens, three eights, four nines, and six tens. Total, that is going to be 21. So we don't have five numbers, we actually have 21 numbers that we want to divide by. So we're going to go ahead and divide 174 by 21 and we should get eight dollars and 29 cents is our average And that's our first example of a weighted mean. Okay, let's look at another one that has a little bit more bearing on you if you are a college student. The second example of a weighted mean is your GPA or your grade point average. So to calculate the GPA, we want to multiply the number of credits by the value of each grade. A, B, C, D, and F, these are not variables. They actually have numbers associated with them. So an A is worth four points, a B is worth three, a C is worth two, a D is worth one, and an F is worth zero. So just like we did before, we're going to multiply the number of credits by the value and then we want to divide by the total number of credits. Instead of being called frequency, we call it credits. So credits not only determines how many hours you're in class, but it also determines how much weight you get for that grade. So let's go ahead and find a GPA for a student who took the following classes last semester. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug in the numbers for the letters. So an A is worth 4 points. If we multiply 4 times 4, we get 16. A C is worth 2 points. If we multiply 3 times 2, we get 6. A B is worth 3 points. If we multiply 3 times 3, we get 9. Again, an A is worth 4. We multiply 2 times 4, we get 8. And a D is worth 1. If we multiply 2 times 1, we get 2. If we go ahead and add these up, I get 41. We want to know our frequency. How many credits did we take this semester? 
I get 14. So my GPA is going to be my sum of all my grades, my 41, divided by the total number of credits that I'm taking. So I'm going to divide by 14. And if we divide 41 by 14, we get 2.92. Eight. I want to round to the nearest hundred, so I need one more decimal place, the eight. And the eight tells me to round up, so we're going to round up to a 2.93. So we ended up with a C, almost a B average. All right, so that takes care of our statistics. And so... We'll go ahead and take a quick break, and then we'll come back and look at something else.